A patron recently requested that I build a half-scale Mr. Handy, and I was like, wait, haven't I gotten that request before? Yeah. Yeah, I have. You know, it takes like on average a week to do one of these builds and I get requests every day. So stuff kind of gets away from me. But that one definitely got buried on my to-do list. So <laughs> thanks, John. Here we go. For this build, I used EVA foam, craft foam, coffee foam, putty, paint, super glue, hot glue, cutting tools, sanding tools, safety gear, scissors, razor pens, and a box cutter. I started with an old bike light because it has that retro Americana vibe. However, when scavenging for parts in real life, it's very unlikely that you're gonna find duplicates of a very obscure specific piece. So rather than wasting time searching for more, I pulled a pattern off of the bike light so that I could replicate it in foam. Not to mention this is super heavy. It's metal and glass. So if you're making a, a puppet that has to articulate, that's, it's gonna be, no, it'd be super top heavy. Now for regular subscribers, this is a process that I I've covered many times before in the channel. So rather than wearing out the William Shakespeare soundboard, how about we give a little backstory on this robot instead? Robot, did you hear that? Robot, what will the robot do? Frame somebody. In the Fallout franchise, Mr. Handy is a multi-purpose robot developed by General Atomics International before the Great War. The, the in-game Great War, not the whoops we poisoned France war. And refined in collaboration with Robco Industries. It was an incredibly popular model used by by government agencies, private companies, and individual citizens across the United States. This is sort of like Robbie the Robot if they had the technology to design the suit around animatronics instead of an alcoholic. As a result, there are multiple variations throughout the franchise, but generally they're spherical with three eyes protruding from the top of the body on mechanical struts and three arms suspended below, like a metal jellyfish. The whole assembly hovers effortlessly, kept aloft by a jet thruster with seemingly limitless fuel. Well, it's it's nuclear, so if it's electric, I can kind of kind of see that. I'm building the domestic servant version, but using this tutorial, you could easily build the rest of the variants. I mean, Sergeant Handy is essentially the same thing, but with an army green paint job. So now that we've got that pattern cut out, I heat form those using my heat gun. When it was sufficiently heated up, I pressed it over a planishing iron or anvil to help shape the foam into a curved piece and stuck it into a cylinder, transparent for your benefit. And while I waited for the exterior to cool, I made the internal support structure out of more scrap foam. These pieces will provide a mounting point for the struts to attach to. The eye itself is three circles stacked on top of one another. I carved lines in the exterior of the widest one and heat formed them so that they'd open up to create that texture, focusing ring texture. Oh, that's that's what it, okay. That, that actually makes sense. Whoever designed that apparently had a gig focus pulling. Respect. I used a similar method on the top circle to make the iris to prevent any gould from getting through. That joke was for 19 Stargate fans. Worth it. By this point, the outer casing had cooled down, so I took it out of its dish and glued the seams together with super glue. Then I glued the two halves together. After that, I glued the rings together with hot glue. There's no tension on these circles, so I can get away with hot glue here. Also, I cut out the center with a leather hole punch. Once I was through all three, I glued it into the iPod. I told, I swear I didn't do that on purpose, but that, that's, that's what it is. It's a pod that holds an electronic eye. What, in, what am I supposed to call it? Camera nacelle? Then I glued in the rest of the supports. I also glued a half round bevel around the outside to hold in the lens when I eventually put the lens in there. It's best to do that after painting. I sanded some of the rough spots and then filled in the seams with putty. I set that aside to dry and moved on to the next piece, which will be the cowling that covers the eye socket opening. I'm trying to go in some kind of consistent order here instead of jumping around for convenience and totally failing. <laughs> this piece is a lot easier than the eye. It's just one piece. It does need to be heat formed though, so I proceed with that. As I finish each piece, I take it over to the painting station, throw a layer of paint on it, and then make a duplicate. Since there are three eyes and three arms on this robot, there's a lot of duplicate pieces, which sort of tricked me into thinking that this build would be a lot easier because it's a lot of the same steps over and over again. And yeah, easier, sure, but it still takes time to build all those parts. Hence the three week upload gap. My bad. For the body, I used the largest styrofoam dome available 
available at my local craft store, two of them actually, to make a sphere. Pro tip, don't try this build during the holiday season because these will all be sold out due to kids making fake snowmen. Curse you childhood whimsy. What a waste of good robot parts. I painted the inside black so that it wouldn't be visible from the outside. The openings for the eyes are huge and white styrofoam will shatter the illusion. I figured out where all the openings would go and marked them with a dark marker. Normally you want to use a highlighter so that it won't show through the paint, but this is going to need so many layers of black paint that it's, it's just not going to matter this time. I chopped out the openings with a work knife, then I chopped off the top with the same. Now when you're cutting styrofoam this thin, it has a high likelihood of that. There's a high likelihood of that, which is not an unrecoverable failure. It's just annoying. I saved all those pieces because they'll need to go back together in just a minute. I cut a notch out of the lid and then got to it. I carefully glued those back together with hot glue and toothpick skewers to support it. Styrofoam doesn't really like hot glue. And by that, I mean it's even more of a insulator and therefore a heat retainer than EVA foam is. So, so it's very difficult to hot glue styrofoam. To speed up the cooling process, I pressed metal blocks against the glue seam to soak up some of that heat and speed up the cool down. When it was back together, I glued the top back on. I carved it down a bit so that it looks like an inset hatch as opposed to a complete sphere. Now, another way that I was considering doing this was using a rotary tool with a thin drum bit, but I was concerned that that would be even more destructive. And like I said, there was a shortage of styrofoam domes when I made this. Not to mention if you have to buy replacement parts, it's just, I'm not made of money, clearly. This is how to build props on a budget for a reason. There's no replacement parts are not in the budget. So thank you patrons more on them in a bit when the hot glue cooled I puttied the edge and set it aside to dry. There's a fast drying putty So that won't actually take too long. I made a panel for the back out of two millimeter craft foam It has a couple of vents because vents equals sci-fi However, styrofoam does not equal sci-fi So I cut a hole in the back just to get more depth if those vents ever end up pointed straight towards the camera And then I glued it on and moved on to the lower half, which is a lot easier, in my opinion, because I'm not totally compromising the structural integrity by cutting massive openings, so it's a lot sturdier. It has two protrusions sticking out of the back on either side, which I made out of styrofoam half spheres and extended with a strip of white EVA foam because they're a little more cylindrical. Although I did cut those a bit of an angle though, just so that they would sit on the dome correctly. I'm just now realizing that the color doesn't really matter because this whole thing is gonna get painted over in the end. Ah, well, it's done is done. I stuck them on. Next, I added a vent to the back. This is identical to the one on my Star Wars jetpack builds, so I don't feel like I need to rehash that. Although this one sits on a cone, so I made that out of a slightly curved four millimeter foam piece. Then I glued it together and glued it to the dome. Before gluing the two dome halves together, Together, I have to first make the innards. Now because they're mostly hidden, they don't need to be exact. They don't need to be as intricate as the Mr. Handy robots that are flying around without the casing. But there does need to be something there to hold up the eye stalks, which means I might as well make it close. You know, just make an attempt to get close. So essentially the shape is gonna be accurate, but it's not gonna be every single bolt and rivet. So I made that really simplica simplicated. Sure. That's a made up word. They're all made up. I made this really basic ultra simplified version of the innards out of a foam floor mat, go figure, and hot glue. This is what it looked like before I closed it up. I left a small opening in the front for the ball and socket joint of the eye stalk, well the socket part anyway, and I used scrap foam for some minor internal support. Then I closed it up. I added structures to the sides which are going to hold up the side eye struts. Once the pieces were secured and the glue had completely dried, well solidified, I widened the sockets to the width of the eye struts. Then I added EVA foam dowels and circle offcuts for detail. And finally, various lengths of wire. Again, these don't have to be accurate, they just have to be there. People are only gonna catch glimpses and shadows of the interior, so that's what I'm trying to account for. In fact, it doesn't even need to be painted because in the game, it's EVA foam gray. I love it when that happens. Like how they make a foam that's Pip-Boy 3000 green. Saves me so much time on painting. Then I placed it into the dome. I've since thrown a layer of paint on it. Super confused. I thought I'd call that out just so people didn't get confused because it's so confusing, right? I need to do multiple layers on each piece so I get one in wherever I can. Oh, also I added bevels to the front. In addition to the hot glue, I skewered it in there to hold it in place because if it breaks loose after the fact, it's going to be so obnoxious to repair. I don't want to go nowhere. Once it was secured, I attached the top 
dome to the bottom one. It's very difficult to get the edge to line up, so I skewered some toothpicks in there to hold it in place as the glue solidified. And then when it did, I just left them in there. If they stuck out, I just trimmed them with some side cutters. Next, I moved down to the arm-mounted thruster assembly. I started with a circle. I carved it myself from a bigger circle. Then I glued a smaller circle in the center of that to support the thruster, and I drilled out a hole in the center for the green screen dowel to go through. The main length of that was a cardboard poster tube, but I ended up cutting it down even further later on. Then I built it out with scrap foam to add more detail. I used foam cat toys for the hemispheres. Then I made the thruster itself, added detail to that, then added these gear teeth around the edge of the base circle. Those are sort of adapters for the arms to lock into. I thought it looked a little short, so I added an empty duct tape spool in there to lengthen it, and I had various other random details to make it look more mechanical. Next for the shoulders, again, more cat toys, and circles, lots of circles, so many circles. Endless circles. Oh shoot, there's a horseshoe. Glued those all together. Covered up one of the seams with two millimeter craft foam and dots to simulate rivets. Because it's such a weird shape, I had to hold it up with metal blocks as I worked so that it wouldn't fall over and you'd get the, the glue hardening at an incorrect angle. Moving on, I made the first arm segment. On a human, I guess this would be a, the upper arm. It's a little confusing because its arms are where its legs should be. This piece is the outer cowling. It's more tubular than the previous pieces, so it doesn't need quite as much heat forming, like it doesn't need to be curved three-dimensionally. While it cools, I'm gonna make some vents. The arms also have vents, because sci-fi. You know, I'm making fun of it, but it's nuclear powered, so you'd have to assume it's putting out a ton of heat. You know, some thought went into it. I made that out of four millimeter craft foam, and the elbow was sort of a mix of various widths of foam. Elbow? Yeah, sure, that makes sense. I put in a backing behind the cowling so that it would hold on to its curved shape and not deform. Then I attached the elbow elbow pieces and shoulder circles that match the width of the adapter that I just built. The next arm segment is somewhat more geometrical in contrast to the upper one, so I cut up a bunch of angular shapes about six layers thick. I made sure that half of them were mirrored so that I didn't have to deal with the pattern on the back of the foam. I chopped out a notch at the joint so that it would fit into the previous segment but also not articulate too much. Because this layer is supposed to be even more angled than the rest of it, I beveled the edge using an incredibly sharp knife. I'm consistently going back and sharpening the knife, by the way. Even so, I still had to sand it a bit on my belt sander. Then I glued all the pieces together, and I used more 2mm circles to simulate rivets. And I made some fake pneumatics in the joint there out of scrap foam dowels. And then I did that two more times! It's all- there's three of everything, so if you're seeing me making a part, assume that I did it two more times off camera. Just like that. The next segment, it's actually much easier. It's totally flat, consists of three pieces. The center one is cut from a 3 8 inch thick floor mat foam piece, and then the outer two are four millimeter craft foam pieces. There's an alcove on the inside that's supposed to house a pneumatic piston, so I made that out of another EVA foam half round bevel and put a small strip of two millimeter craft foam over a portion of it so that it actually looks like a piston. And then I did that two more times. For the next segment, I hate that they made this thing with so many segments. Just just make a squid. Pull a matrix and just make a squid. Why you gotta make my life difficult, Bethesda? Freaking Bethesda. Freaking Beth. What are we doing? Four millimeter craft foam. Cut it up. I used a larger half round bevel to make the outer portion of the segment. I cut it up and glued it on, making sure that the one on the opposite side was mirrored. The center is empty because they sort of imply that all these segments fold up into each other, which I don't think actually works, but th this is how they made it. I'm just doing and what, how they did it. I'm just trying to match what they did. Anyway, I left them separately for now just so the paint wouldn't glue them all together. Moving on. I guess this would be the wrist? Sure, why not? Then I had to make these little joint segments to hold the hands, Velociraptor air quotes. Each arm actually holds a different tool, presumably the most useful tool for the task at hand. Not sure why the domestic servant droid has a buzz saw, but I don't know your life, to each his own. Anyway, the first one is a standard claw so that you can threaten Inspector gadget, or assign Hero Yui his next mission, or betray Jim Hawkins in the quest for Treasure Planet. Are any of these early 2000s cartoon references landing? Anybody? Alright, moving on. The next arm gadget
gadget is the buzzsaw. Literally anything else would be more useful. A vacuum, a spatula, a rattle. The thing takes care of a baby for crying out loud. It's a good thing the world ends in the video game, otherwise Robco would be drowning in lawsuits. So sure, make a buzzsaw. I can't believe I'm doing this because I have a buzzsaw. But then the prop would be too dangerous and in an onset accident, I'd rather my prop broke than my actor did. So let's move on to the flamethrower. Seriously, what are we doing here, Robco? I built that out of scrap foam and spaceship parts. It's called scratch building. Hence the Commodore 64 font on the fuel tank. It, it's an old model kit. The fuel tank is yellow. I made the eye stalks out of wood because they have to be sturdy. And then I painted everything. Each of these pieces has to be painted separately because if I put them all together and paint them all at once, then all the joints will fuse together. And then that defeats the purpose of making it for real. The whole point is having something that an actor can interact with. So as I've been building these parts, each time I finish a piece, I paint it before moving on to the next one. That way, when I finish the final piece, I only have to wait for one part to dry rather than 33. When they're all dry, I applied a metallic top coat using rub and buff metallic finish. Chrome spray paint would look better for the pre-war version, but this time of year, it's not warm enough to use spray paint. So I went with the rub and buff and we'll just say this this is the post-apocalyptic weathered version. Not to mention less shiny props are better for green screen, but that's just a particular concern for me, you know? The point is that it gives an uneven coat implying tarnishing and grease buildup over time. Then I put bath bomb bulbs in the eyes for the lenses. I placed red bulbs in the tops of the eye pods. There it is again. There we go. I didn't like that the back of this was just blank and that's something that's never gonna be directly seen by the camera, but still it was bothering me. So I took all of the scrap bevel pieces and some scrap dowels and put them in there to sort of imply pneumatics and cables and things. And I connected all of the articulated segments and mounted them to the central core. And that's how to build Mr. Handy. I'll also make sure you include some plutonium in there somewhere. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this build, then you can head on over to the Patreon page and join these fine people who make these videos possible. Seriously, that ad revenue is a joke. An enormous amount of work goes into these builds and they just would not happen with without the support of my patrons, who by the way, receive ad-free early access while ensuring the channel's survival. Because these builds take so long, while I'm working on the next project, you can check out the numerous past builds by following the links, presumably on your screen, and subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of future uploads. All right, happy crafting. See you later.